everyone. Thanks for the opportunity to present today. Um, so first, I just wanted to provide a little bit of context for those of you who uh, it's your first COAST meeting. Um, so I've been working on this initiative to engage agencies and the legislature for um, about two years. And I work in partnership with Dr. James Lintone, who's a faculty member at CSU Monterey Bay. He, by the way, sends his regrets that he wasn't able to be here today. But um, we presented at the Coast meeting about two years ago. And at that point in time, we were just starting, and so we presented our strategy. Um, and so the, the point of today is really to update everybody on what we've been doing. So James and I have um, basically two very um, broad uh, goals that are derived uh, directly from uh, the strategic plan. Um, first, we want Coast to be an honest broker of information for, for decision makers. We um, don't feel it's our role to um, recommend any particular policy outcome, but again, provide decision makers and managers with the best available science. And our second goal is uh, we are seeking extramural funding for Coast and for Coast member research. So um, our approach to successfully um, implementing our, our initiative or our two objectives has three prongs, and I'll give examples of each of them. First, we want to increase the visibility of Coast policymakers and agencies. Um, and you know, I think uh, this is not a surprise to anybody in the room, but I think there's a history, possibly due to the master plan for education, that typically um, faculty members from the UC are called upon for scientific advice. And so this goal is really um, to remind folks, to remind decision makers that there is great research being conducted at the CSU. Um, for, for number two, we really wanna help you um, have your science used in policy processes if you would like them, uh, if you would like it to be used. These are things like um, development of action plans. And lastly, we want to uh, position individual faculty members to obtain funding from um, non-traditional sources of funding, things like um, state bond funds or state special funds or federal, not, uh, I can't give you any advice on National uh, Science Foundation. You guys know, know that better than I do. So many of you will probably recognize this gentleman. This is um, Mike Graham from Moss Landing mm -hmm. Marine Labs. And he's speaking in front of a group of uh, about 150, uh, I'm sorry, 120 people in Sacramento at our Ocean Day Luncheon in 2018. He's speaking about um, sustainable aquaculture. And uh, this is just one of six briefings that we've had in the last two years. So one of the criteria that we use in choosing topics for briefings is the relevance to policymakers. Obviously, they need to be interested to, to come to our, uh, our briefings. And so to that end, we track legislation that is moving through the state legislature and follow initiatives happening at um, state and federal agencies. Um, we also try to increase the visibility of COAST by having one-on-one -on -one meetings with legislators or their staff. And we have um, nearly continual um, conversations and connections with state agencies to, to stay on top of what's going on in, in their shops. So here's a, a list of the legislators or legislative staff people that we've met with over the past two years, organized by campus. And we chose um, these individuals not only because they have a CSU in or uh, near their district, but because they, they may have been an author of a bill on an ocean or coastal uh, resource <coughs> issue, or because they're on a relevant legislative committee. So in our um, tracking of the bills that are moving through the legislature, we sometimes identify a bill where we feel like a CSU faculty member could lend their expertise to the issue. And we found that um, it's very effective to reach out to the committee staff people. These are um, staff people that um, work directly
directly for um, the committees that are analyzing bills. And um, over the past two years, we've developed really strong relationships um, with, these, with these individuals. And these are just some of the, the issue areas that these legislative committees cover. There's probably five or six committees that we really stay on top of and, and try to connect with quite regularly. And as Leaf Behinds, we, uh, we have developed what we call expert or briefing sheets. And as you can see from the screen capture, this is uh, one from our briefing sheet on sea level rise. Uh, on the left-hand side, we attempt to very succinctly um, describe the issue at hand, um, and then on the left-hand side, describe um, or list the CSU faculty members that are working on that issue. So uh, the purpose of these documents is really to help decision makers quickly and effectively find the CSU faculty member with the relevant expertise. You know, these are folks in the legislature and to some degree in agencies they are working on, on crazy timelines. So we want them to have these briefing sheets in hand, on their shelf, they can pull it out and, and see who they might wanna call on any particular issue. So we've uh, completed uh, eight on those subject areas that are listed here and, and we're developing more. So this is um, just a, a summary slide of the CSU faculty who have spoken directly um, to legislators or their staff. It doesn't include um, uh, many more additional folks who have spoken at our six briefings. Um, so just really briefly, Kathy Boyer from San Francisco State and Allison Haupt from Monterey um, both advised um, Senator Scott Wiener's staff um, as he was developing a very large bill, SB 69, uh, on ocean health. Uh, Dr. Chris Lowe last year spoke with um, somebody from the Assembly Natural Resources Committee on offshore oil platform ecology. Um, Mark Severy, who's with the Schatz Energy Center at Humboldt State, he's gonna be testifying on May 3rd before the uh, Joint Fisheries and Aquaculture Committee He's gonna be uh, talking about the impact of offshore wave, uh, I'm sorry, offshore wind energy production on fisheries and aquaculture. Um, I'm gonna actually talk about uh, Claire Steele in one moment here, and, uh, and then several CSU publications, I forwarded them to the Senate Office of Research that was uh, developing um, a memo about um, uh, marine debris. So the, um, Second prong in our approach is to increase the involvement of CSU faculty members in policy development. And I think the best way to explain what we're doing here is uh, to use an example. And the example is the um, California Ocean Litter Strategy, which was developed over uh, about an 18 month period led by the California Ocean Protection Council and NOAA. And um, I participated in um, several stakeholder workshops and kind of served as a liaison between CSU faculty members and the Ocean Protection Council and NOAA. Um, we first, I think, sent a big blast over the Coast Listserv to identify who would be interested in, in having their science used in this process. And there was a core group of about five or six faculty members that were pretty involved throughout, their pro uh, throughout this process. So again, I kind of acted as a liaison taking um, what the uh, CSU faculty members were telling us was important to be in this plan and relaying that back to the government agencies. Um, our suggested language got into the draft version uh, word for word. And very significantly, I think, in the final version of this plan, um, again, about five or six CSU faculty members, including Sean, um, are listed by name in this plan. And so the secondary benefits that I'm hoping will come out of this is that um, it will set these folks up for um, potential future funding. And it also has the benefit of um, these individuals being um, more easily recognized as experts in their field. And that's actually exactly what happened about a month ago. So um, uh, Dr. Claire Steele from CSU Channel Islands was very involved in this uh, ocean litter 
strategy. She attended a couple of the stakeholder workshops and um, again is listed um, as a um, partner in implementing this plan. And um, because the Ocean Protection Council knew about Claire's work, they actually suggested her name to a Senate committee who was looking for somebody to testify on the issue of plastics in the marine environment. And, and Claire just did a wonderful job. Um, that um, uh, hearing just happened about a month ago. So, um, also on the point of um, CSU faculty members being involved in policy development, um, arguably the most important scientific advisory team in the state of California is the Ocean Protection Council Science Advisory Team. Um, they, you know, just, uh, to save time, I'll just say they obviously provide science advice um, to the Ocean Protection Council. There was a open um, solicitation for nominations to that um, science advisory team in November, and we put forth um, six names. We um, sent an email over the Coast Listserv and asked for people who would be interested in being nominated. Um, the, um, the Ocean Protection Council was also looking for particular areas of expertise, so we also reached out proactively to some folks. And I'm very happy to report that we were successful. Um, unfortunately, I'm not able to say who those folks are that are going to be um, nominated to the Ocean Protection Council. Uh, the council has to um, approve the appointment of these individuals, and they're going to be doing that at the um, at a Ocean Protection Council happening in about one month. So I should be able to tell you who those folks are in just. Um, and then on our um, third and final prong is uh, all around funding. So you all have probably received more email than you could ever want from me <laughs> about different funding opportunities. So we see our role as really um, distilling this information for you. We know um, state and federal funding opportunities are really complicated. So we try to do a lot of the legwork for you so that you can read our synthesis and decide in a very um, uh, quickly and efficiently whether you think this is something that you should um, pursue further. Um, we also advocate for CSU interests in funding programs. So two examples, um, about, I think it was about 18 months ago, the Ocean Protection Council um, released um, a RFP for scientific research proposals. It was managed by the two um, C grant programs. And uh, typically those programs have a match requirement. We uh, wrote a letter asking for match to be waived, and it was. And I've, I've heard anecdotally from some folks that that was pretty important to them to be able to apply for this funding. Um, the second example is also the Ocean Protection Council. They recently put out their draft grant guidelines for uh, Proposition 68, and we advocated um, for longer time periods for folks to develop their proposals. Uh, oftentimes, state agency proposals can have a very quick turnaround, something on the order of, of six weeks, and we've heard you know, that you guys need, need more time. So. Um, lastly, in the last um, six months or so, I've been providing direct support to, um, uh, to PIs. And so this could uh, involve proposal coordination, obtaining letters of support, um, and I think most importantly is connecting requests to existing policies and state priorities. So because I kind of have to have my finger on the pulse of what's going on in state government, um, I think I can help you save some time by connecting you to different um, initiatives or policies that are going on that really bolster the, the rationale for funding of, of your work. Um, so we've, we've had some success in this area. Um, I was in, involved in the writing of two proposals that total uh, 3.4 million. Again, I can't say what they are because the um, funding entity has asked us not to um, 
not to talk about it publicly until it's um, approved, but again, hopefully we'll be able to, um, to tell you guys in a couple of weeks here what, um, what those projects were. We also have a, um, a pending proposal that I worked with um, uh, Karina on. It's a capital uh, project for the Estuary and Science Center to the California Natural Resources Agency. So I'll um, conclude there, but um, I am happy to answer any questions and happy to have you contact me directly if I can um, help you in any way. Thank you very much.